Hey guys, Mr. Antoon here. Hope you're doing well. Um, this is going to finish out chapter four, civil liberties, section seven and eight. This should be a quick one. So the right to privacy, guys, this is an important one to understand just the basic premise here. Do we have a right to privacy? Okay. So here's the question. Do we have a right to an abortion? Question. Maybe, kind of. Do we have a right to privacy? Yes. Is that right enumerated in the Constitution? Is it listed there? Is it written there? No, it's not. So how did they figure out the, the, this, how did the SCOTUS figure out the right to privacy? So again, the question I want you to think about, do we have a right? Yes, we do. It's a defin the definition is that we have a right to private personal life free from invasion from the government, intrusion. They can't really have you know, a say in what happens in my private life. It's not explicitly stated in the Constitution, but it's implied by the third, fourth, fifth, and ninth. It's called the penumbra. I'm going to explain that in a second because I love that. Uh, Griswold versus Connecticut in 65 about uh, um, married couples can use contraception is where it kind of started. And it led, then it led to Roe v. Wade in 1973. But there you go. So let's bring out spotlight and put like the sun, a, a light on to our uh, amendments. And you can see where it highlighted them. So the justices figured out from that we have a right to privacy. So let's put the Constitution in front and it gives a shadow and that shadow in the, it, like, think about an eclipse. We had an eclipse here a few years ago. Um, it wasn't a full eclipse. Uh, if you were underneath where it's completely darkness, it's called direct. That's enumerated from the Constitution. We know our exact rights. Implied is what they call the penumbra. It's the shadow on the outside when you see a partial eclipse. And that's what the idea of where they got the right to privacy with, guys. And again, you can see, again, this led to Roe v. Wade. It gives the woman the ability with her doctor to choose to have an abortion not the government. And it's only in the first trimester, guys. Uh, states had a varying on the other, uh, you know, each state can decide on the other ones. And you can see the New York Times there. Weird is that LBJ died the same day as they passed this case. So again, it's about pro-choice pro versus pro-life. That's the big fight that we're having over. But it gave women autonomy over their pregnancy during the first three months. Um, and again, at different levels based on the state. 46 state laws had to be changed based on this cool uh, court ruling. And you can see in a post-Roe v. Roe world, the dark blue states are likely to protect it. The, the, light, the light, light, light ones like Texas, where we are, are more trying to restrict the access to it because they believe in pro-life. So they're against this idea of you taking a life at that point. Planned Parenthood for, versus Casey, another famous case. Uh, Planned Parenthood's major role is to help out women and obviously in terms of men with couples, but it's about women's health. Abortions aren't a big percentage of that. So again, I know that's a big deal because Planned Parenthood gets money from the federal government. A lot of conservatives, Republicans are not happy with that. Just a thought. Um, so in Planned Parenthood versus Casey, they gave you, there were three things up in Pennsylvania. 24 hour waiting period, which is good because you wanna make sure you, you're, you, you wanna take you know, to have that abortion, you want to, to wait to see if you have any remorse about it. If you're a minor, you need consent of one of the parents. And then they proposed the married woman had to notify the her husband of the intention. Well, they, they took the first two and got rid of the third one. So again, what this does is, is it continues to limit access to having that ability to have the abortion. And that is what Republicans are fighting for. In other states, there's the heartbeat laws that are going through the state legislatures. Um, Again, it's all going to get to SCOTUS again. And now when you have a 6-3 SCOTUS conservative, you're, you're thinking Roe v. Wade could fall. But remember, conservative justices honor precedent, honor judicial restraint. They don't like to change and overturn stuff from the past. So again, I can't tell you what's going to happen, but I'm letting you know some of the facts with that. So th does this reaffirm or erode Roe v. Wade? Obviously, this is, does erode it to some degree. And again, you can talk about, you know, babies, 55 million have been aborted since 1973, but the numbers are a lot lower than they were at, the, at first. Um, and you can see, again, reasons why women have an abortion. Most of the time, they don't feel uh, old or mature enough to raise a child. They're not ready. They can't afford it. Again, those are the top ones as well. Um, in terms of laws, you can see it's on the decline as opposed to up to 2014. You can see in Roe v. Wade was passed a lot more in abortion laws. It's starting to hit at that. You can see the, the relationship between those two abortion rates. More of the liberal states have more abortions because they have better access to it. Um, 
abortion rates continue to vary by race and ethnicity. You can see black, non-Hispanic, and Hispanics are the top two. Um, just, just kind of looking at some of the st statistics, I can't say it, uh, with those. Uh, the New York Times, in terms of uh, this is now the new thing that's happening, is that um, three states ban third uh, trimester abortions, Iowa, Texas, and Virginia. And you can see up to 28 weeks, uh, it's allowed. And you can see the other, there's no restriction on those other states at the bottom down there. But again, it's just showing you some of the stuff. Uh, tightening laws on abortion. Look at all the rise of, of very hostile towards Roe v. Wade and towards abortion rights. Again, you're just seeing comparison with that. Alabama had, uh, they, they said they were going to give 10 years uh, to life in prison to anybody who helped out an abortion. Again, all of this stuff, it's really interesting how we're having a divide when this was already passed 50 years ago, guys, almost 50 years ago. So with respect to abortion issue, would you consider yourself to be pro-choice or pro-life? Look at our country. Pro-choice at 48, pro-life at 46. It's, it's, we are right around the middle, guys. Republican versus Democrat views, legal under any circumstances, legal under certain circumstances, illegal. And you can see, again, the breakdown of this poll. Um, conservatives say if it's a, if it's rape or if it's the, the health of the mother is going to or the child is going to do it, you, they would understand it, that you could take that. But again, there's there, there, there are very small percentages of any issues with the health of the mother, mainly, or even with rape compared to all the other cases. So again, there's the, the part of the fight as well. And then you could see again the world. I mean, China's had a lot. You know, hopefully China's background, they put a limit on children. If you had, a, if you used to be, if you had more than one child, you were taxed higher. So they had to abort if they had extra babies. I don't think they do it as much now than they did before. Okay, so this idea of a right to privacy, as you could see in this political cartoon, that the government is spying on us to some degree. And I don't know if you know this, this is an acronym. USA Patriot is an acronym. What does it stand for? Well, I'm going to let you know now and then see if you can remember in class if you guys watch this. It's uniting and strengthening America by protecting, excuse me, by providing appropriate tools required to intercept and obstruct terrorism. I couldn't see because my thing was over it. But again, this, uh, this is in 2001 after 9-11. So now they went and took all this stuff from us. They didn't need to uh, get a warrant for certain things. They could tap your phone for a certain amount of time. Um, all of these issues that we started losing more of our rights because of 9-11. So the government was trying to find out and, and root out domestic terrorism. I'm not a terrorist. I'm not really worried about it. But you're once they take an inch, they're looking for more and more. And that's the concern with the many things. People who are Second Amendment fans believe that once they take away this right, they're going to take away the next right, and eventually it's your guns. And that's their fear. Same thing with privacy here, guys. Once they take a little bit, they're going to want more and more in the process. But 14 years later, they had the USA Freedom Act. And again, that stood for another acronym, Uniting and Strengthening America. Um, hold on. I have something blocked in the way because I don't memorize it. By fulfilling rights and ensuring um, effective discipline over monitoring. <laughs> Somebody's sitting there making all the money, making all these acronyms. You can see they, they changed a lot of the stuff that they had. So they gave us back a lot of the rights. It ends the bull collection. You can see strengthens protection for your civil liberties, your rights, increases transparency so you can see what they're doing. So again, our rights kind of given back to us, but I still think they're, the government can really do what they want without our knowledge. All right, lastly, let's look at the overview of this section or of uh, civil liberties. How can it affect the, the big scope of picture? Well, it's only going to be one slide. So how understanding civil liberties and democracy. So the rights that are insured in our Bill of Rights, obviously we value them tremendously. And who protects them the most? It's the courts that really have to protect these civil liberties, especially when it comes to civil rights, which is group stuff, which is chapter five. But again, you're looking at the, the idea of democracy, that this is truly what democracy is based on. So you have to thank the anti-federalists for giving us this protections against our government. We don't want an, a, a, a monarchy, an absolute ruler, therefore, or government that is tyrannical. So we have protections against them. Obviously, if they became over absolute monarch, we wouldn't have these rights. They would go away and a democracy would crumble in our country. So 
again, it's important to understand those that, that how important these are, even if you don't really use them every day. In terms of the scope of government, again, in deciding between freedom and order, we generally choose freedom, liberty. Um, they obviously limit the scope of government. You can't, you don't have 100% free speech. We can't say I'm going to assassinate the president. You could say it generically like, oh, yeah, but if you're serious about it and you look like you're plotting it, you're going to have Secret Service show up at your door because someone's going to, to hear it. And then they might not know if you're joking or not, and you're going to get in trouble as a result. So you don't have everything. So obviously, um, it depends on obviously which party is in power as well as so that's always a reflect of the scope of government. If it's a liberal government, they're going to increase um, the, the, the size of government. Therefore, it's more intrusive on uh, our liberties in the sense of big government versus the conservatives who usually not really now. I mean, Trump is not really a conservative, guys. They're, they're, they're changing this idea of republic, republic, Republicans to Trumpism, the idea that it's about him, really, because, again, they're not doing normally what traditionally what a conservative would do. So it's kind of changing that idea. So in terms of the traditional conservative or Republican, they would want a smaller government. So the scope of government would be smaller compared in terms of trying to attack your liberties. Because remember, Republicans today, even though they were Democrats at the beginning, because they kind of flipped, they want, they're, they're the anti-federalists. They're the ones who want states to have more power and regional power as opposed to the central government. Whereas liberals want Obviously, states have the power, but they want a big fence. When they get in office, they want a big, bigger scope of government. So that always affects them. Okay, that is it for today. I will see you in chapter five. You guys take care.